Good morning, everyone. My name is William Fillmore. I'm Vice Chancellor for Government and External Relations at Troy University. It's my pleasure to welcome you this morning to the 2024 Fred B. Davis Scholarship Brunch. When good people get together, good things can happen. And that's what is taking place here this morning. This gathering today brings together scholarship recipients and donors in a celebration of your selfless generosity to meet the needs of deserving and hardworking students. Today, we especially want to honor the lasting memory of Provost Emeritus Dr. Fred B. Davis, a Troy Trojan, a true Troy Trojan. Dr. Fred B. Davis lived his life with a love for pursuing knowledge, and he demonstrated and passed along that love to so many students here at Troy. It is for this reason and many others that this event bears Dr. Davis's name to honor his legacy. I'd like to recognize a few of our university's leadership members this morning. First and foremost, our Chancellor, Dr. Jack Hawkins, Jr., and the First Lady of Troy, Ms. Janice Hawkins, are graciously joining us this morning, and we thank you for being here. There's a few other special guests I'd like to recognize. Although all of you are very special in many, many ways, uh, there's a few folks that are especially important to make sure that we recognize this morning. Ms. Karen Carter, who's a longtime member of our Board of Trustees and a dedicated member of our Foundation Board. <laughs> the President of our National Alumni Association, Ms. Rosemary Ellabash, is here with fellow board members. Yep. And she has fellow board members, Mr. Bill Hopper, Mr. Lloyd Taylor, Mr. Freddie Thomas, and Mr. Jerry Williams, who are joining her as well. Thank you all for being here. From our Legacy Giving Council, we have our chairwoman, Ms. Mary Ida Williams. Thank you. We have a few other folks from the university side that we're honored to be joining each of you this morning. Dr. Carrie Palmer is our Senior Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs. And, yep. and we also have um, two dedicated members of our Trojan family and former faculty, Drs. Rebecca and Earl Ingram. And at the time of their retirement from 31 years of service, Dr. Earl Ingram served as the Senior Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, and along with his wife, Dr. Rebecca Ingram, who is an assistant professor in the College of Education. They obviously touch many lives and continue to do so through their scholarships, benefiting students pursuing a degree in teacher education programs. Thank you. I want to recognize several of our deans who have joined us. Dr. Michael Thrasher with the College of Communication and Fine Arts. Dr. Yep. Dr. Fred Figliano with the College of Education. We have Dr. Legary Carter with the College of Health Sciences. And Dr. Judson Edwards with the College of Business. Thank you all for your... Also want to note that in addition, we have Dr. Blake Bedsole, who's our Associate Vice Chancellor for Enrollment Management and our Associate Vice Chancellor for Marketing and Communications, Leslie Scrushy, who are joining us this morning. <laughs> now, all of you know him well, but let me make sure I say we're fortunate to have our Associate Vice Chancellor for Development, Greg Nedler, here with us. We're also very fortunate to have him on the team at Troy University. His experience and work ethic, as many of you know, is second to none, and we appreciate all he does to advance not only the university's foundation and the scholarship efforts, but the development office as a whole. So thank you, Greg. We appreciate it. I'd now like to ask our SGA president, uh, Theo Tennis, of the Student Government Association, 
and the recipient of the Donald C. Hines Endowed Scholarship to deliver our invocation. Thea. Please bow your heads with me. God, we all have needs that only you can meet. We thank you for the blessings that you have given us so that we can be blessings to others. Help us to honor the generosity displayed by friends, families, and supporters in this room, and help us to honor the greatest act of generosity ever when you gave your son for our sins. As we finish the semester, we pray for academic success in school, professional success in our careers, and relational success among our friends and family and neighbors. In the midst of our seeking of jobs, accolades, and degrees, help us to remember that skillful and godly wisdom, the wisdom of you, is the principal thing. And thank you for bringing us all here together this morning. Amen. Thank you, Theo. At this time, we'll begin our brunch portion of the program. Um, I want to note our music earlier that will continue throughout the morning was being played by Miles Thomas, who's a senior music industry student, and uh, and he's a scholarship recipient from Phoenix City, Alabama. You'll actually get to hear from him later in the program. At this time, I'd like to take the opportunity to introduce, and I'm honored to be um, able to introduce, our Chancellor, Dr. Jack Hawkins, Jr. He's a strong leader. His vision, character, and capability um, that he has provided Troy University now in his 35th year of doing that as the leader of our institution. Um, it's important to note that he is the longest serving president of a public college or university in the United States. Dear, yeah. During his tenure, he's helped transform Troy University into an international institution with the most beautiful campus in America right here in Troy, Alabama. He's a Marine who has fought in Vietnam, has been a leader in a wartime and in peacetime. Uh, lately, he's led the way to fight to keep college affordable, and your scholarships that you've helped to fund have been a strong emphasis as we work to limit student debt and make a bright future possible for our students. It's a pleasure at this time for me to introduce our Chancellor, Dr. Jack Hawkins. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, William. You know, I often say the best barometer for what you can do is what you've done. And uh, we knew at an early point that uh, William Fillmore was going to high places. We just didn't know he was going to go to high places so quickly. But uh, his first ascendancy uh, occurred when he married the, uh, the homecoming queen. And today that homecoming queen is the chief of staff of Governor Kay Ivey. And we've been fortunate to have uh, William here for the last year, a year and a half, uh, in our governmental relations role, and, and now he is uh, the vice chancellor. I want to thank him. He uh, has done a tremendous job, uh, as has Theo. Theo, thank you for uh, your leadership with the uh, SGA. We're so proud of you and, and all of our students uh, whom you've led, and, and uh, to Greg Nedler and the entire staff, thank you. Uh, and thank all of you. I hope you've had an opportunity to read your program this morning, and, and uh, I did, and my wife did, and we were both really inspired, not only uh, by the names of the recipients who we're so proud of, but when you look at that list of donors and you see the unselfish nature of all of those names and people who are listed, and I want to thank you. Uh, we often cite the words of Billy Graham when he said the two most the most powerful but the most underutilized words are those two words thank you and we sincerely mean thank you it means so much and it's such a a pleasure for me to uh, be able to share this occasion I want to thank uh, uh, Miss Karen Carter not only is Karen the uh, a member of our 
Board of Trustees, but she's also a critical member of our uh, foundation board of directors that uh, is so instrumental in, in making these scholarships possible. So Karen, thank you. She has been the chairman of our Academic Affairs Committee, and I'll address academics in just a moment. But uh, Rosemary, thank you, and all, the, uh, all of our alumni board. Uh, we all are critical to the success of this institution. And as I think about the success, I also think our real success is measured in the success of our alumni. And I am so proud of the 165, 70,000 alumni that we have, and I'm proud of the work that Ms. Faith has done. Faith uh, has been with us for now um, a few years, and I'm not going to say that. My wife gets, gets mad at me when I say we've been here 35 years, so I'm not going to say you've been here 27 years, okay? <laughs> What a wonder, and, and all of those, and especially uh, our, our former, our colleagues, former colleagues, thank all of you for being here, and thank all of you for being here on a Saturday morning. As I think about the, the gentleman after whom this uh, event was named, and, and Jane, thank you, uh, you and, and, uh, and the others who were so supportive of, of Fred, particularly in those closing days, Elaine, thank you. Uh, no one did more, I think, to comfort Fred Davis uh, than those of you who are here this morning, and I thank you for that. But Fred was truly a remarkable man, and I'll speak to him in just a moment, too. But if Fred were here, and he's here in spirit, I promise you he's here in spirit, uh, he probably would cite the words of uh, a writer or two, uh, but he probably, in, on this occasion, might even refer to a, a gentleman I often talk about, Charles Dickens in the tale of two cities when he said, these are the best of times and these are the worst of times. You know, in so many ways, these are challenging times. I know I've had the benefit of being in higher education for a long time and I can promise you these are some of the most challenging times that we've ever experienced in American higher education. Uh, we've had over 860 institutions to close, merge or realign in the last 20 years. Since 2016, over 100 private liberal arts colleges, including two in Alabama, most recently Birmingham Southern, uh, have closed. Why? Too little endowment, old infrastructure, too little technology, uh, faculty that were not teaching relevant and meaningful employable skills. It's just a variety of reasons, but challenging, challenging times. We draw lessons from those times. But for Troy, I am, I am pleased to say these are some of the best of times. I really believe that the best is yet to be. And my predecessor, uh, God bless Dr. Ralph Adams, who did such a great job here, he said upon his retirement, the best is yet to be. I am repeating what Dr. Adams said. I, I really believe that for Troy University, and why? Why are these some of the most exciting times? Well, all of you know that we had our beginning as a teacher education program, a two-year program that started in 1887. And so now for 137 years, we've served the public, not only in Alabama, but we've grown to become an international university. And it's so exciting to see students from around the world come here to take advantage of what we often, as Americans, assume is for granted. We can't take this for granted. It's truly a blessing to be in a place where people care about each other in a beautiful setting where we work hard every day to make sure it's affordable for all of our students. But in so many ways, and I hope as you drive around the campus today, you'll see a few benchmarks of that success. Just across the street, we're seeing go up a, a new building for our health sciences a beautiful new facility that will house our School of Nursing, Allied Health, Kinesiology, and a variety of other programs here and yet to be developed. And Dr. Legary Carter is our new Dean of the College of Health Sciences and doing a great job and I appreciate all that's going on there. Just on the quad you see uh, where the old College of Education used to be located is a new research center. That marks the future of Troy University. I really believe a university evolves from a teacher program to a public service program, and then that third dimension includes research, and that's where we stand today. But on September the 8th, we saw a major achievement 
Many thought never possible for Troy when it was reclassified. We were reclassified as a doctoral degree institution. We currently have three doctoral programs. The first was in nursing, a great program in, uh, to, in DNP programming, a doctorate of nursing practice. And then we added, added a PhD in sport management and the most recent being a PhD in global leadership. And I promise you, it's marked with quality. I met with uh, the group, several cohort groups from that PhD program, and it's available. All these programs are available online. And incidentally, when I arrived, we arrived in Troy in 1989, 100% of our programming was in class. Today, about half of the students we serve are in class. That's how the world has changed. When we arrived in Troy, there were 750 malls across this country. Today, there are about 125, and within the next seven, 10 years, there will only be about 70. What has changed? Pick up your phone. That's what's changed. Life has changed. Uh, our daughter in Maryland never goes to the grocery store. She just orders by phone. Think about how the world has changed. It's a rare occasion when I go home and there's not a box out in front of my front door. <laughs> I know somebody's been shopping, and I bet a lot of you see that same thing happening. These are great times, uh, and in athletics, and often I, I heard, uh, heard a long time ago the late Jerry Falwell, he and I were talking when 30 years ago we were playing Liberty in a football game, and he asked me how was our English department. I said, quite good. He said, I'm sure it is. I'll never forget that football team, but I'm not sure about your English department. Athletics makes a mark in this country, as in no other country in the world. And, uh, and I'm proud of our athletics program. Run by the baseball facility, and you'll see one of the best, not only in the mid-major ranks, but you'll also be, see in our new facility where we've just invested about $12 million to elevate it to the level. Our goal, our goal is not to win a baseball game or two. Our goal is to go to Omaha. And if uh, others can do it, why can't Troy? And that's our motto, why not Troy? And I say that in all of these areas, why not Troy? Why not Troy as a doctoral institution? Why not Troy as an international university? Why not Troy as the most beautiful campus in this state? And why not Troy as it relates to preserving that which makes us unique, and that is the values and the culture of this institution we preached our Board of Trustees every time we meet. Their most important responsibility is to preserve the culture where people care about each other, where faith is important, where patriotism is important, where civic leadership is important. We want our students to go out and not compete with the students from Mississippi or Georgia. We want, us, want our students to beat them. We want them to be globally competitive. You can't be globally competitive if you're not globally aware. And that's why we, with that scholarship support from car tags, I hope all of you have, if you're in this state, I hope you have a car tag. That'll cost you $50, Bill. That's, that's tax exempt. <laughs> and the state will send us back 48 of the 50. We've invested that from day one. We're too frugal to waste our money. And today that fund is approaching $11 million and it allows us to provide every student at this university once a year a scholarship to go abroad for $1,250 per year. That's $5,000 over the course of four years. We want our students to be globally competitive. You can't be globally competitive if you're not globally aware. We want them to go. I love America, but I never love America more than when I'm not in America. When I get out there, Looking back, I see how blessed we are. And if you don't believe that, look at what our southern border is seeing. People are not trying to leave this country. They're trying to come. That should tell us something. We have problems in America. We don't have problems in America compared to the rest of this world. We are blessed to be Americans. We are blessed to be at Troy University. We are blessed to be among people who care. And you make a difference. I'll close by saying when we go from good to great, it'll not be because of the government. It'll be because people care and love this university. They want to support our students. They want to support our programming. And they give not to be giving, but to help.
That's what we're here to do today is to celebrate those of you who have been so unselfish in supporting our students. We will go from good to great because of you. God bless you and thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hawkins, for those very exciting remarks. And we very much appreciate your leadership at Troy University. Um, later in the program, we're gonna recognize all of our donors. But now, what I'd like to do is take a moment to honor the family of Owen Wayne Lewis and their dedication to his memory. Um, to do that, I'd like to invite Avery Zubali up to the stage, a Troy University senior and a scholarship recipient to share with us the impact the Lewis family has made on her educational journey through the work they are doing to keep Owen's memory alive. Avery. I have to move this down just a little bit here. Well, like Mr. Fillmore stated, good morning. My name is Avery Zubley, and as stated, I'm a senior hospitality management major, uh, minoring in event management. It is great to see so many of our donors and recipients being honored at today's brunch. We are here this morning for many, many reasons. Whether you're blessed enough to be receiving a scholarship, you are a donor helping provide higher education for students, or you are a donor creating ways to remember a loved one who is no longer with us, like Drs. Onik and Heather Lewis, who lost their two and a half year old son two years ago this month. Shortly after this tragic loss, they created a lasting impact that not only lights up their lives, but has impacted many other lives in such positive ways. Since Owen's passing, the Lewis has established O's Cool Bike Foundation as a way of honoring Owen and keeping his memory alive. Both Onik and Heather are professors at Troy's campus. They are also two professors who truly care for their students, both personally and academically. I have had the honor of being one of those students. During my time as a Troy student, I have been able to work alongside both of these amazing people on behalf of O's Cool Bike Foundation. The foundation they created helped others in numerous ways, including being able to provide four scholarships in the last two years through the current scholarship endowed shortly after Owen's death. This scholarship is for first-generation college students, like Onik, who are studying social work or hospitality, tourism, and event management. To raise money for the scholarships, O's Cool Bike Foundation hosts the annual Owen Wayne Lewis Memorial Ride right here on Troy's campus. This is a huge event that welcomes not just those associated with Troy University, but the entire Troy community. There are three different long-distance rides, a fun one-mile walk or ride around campus, and then the cutest one, sorry y'all, <laughs> the cutest thing to watch, a sweet lap around the main quad with our little tykes. This event allows people of all ages to get active, get outdoors, and ride bikes, all of which Owen loved to do. With the money raised, the foundation provides the scholarships here at Troy, as well as balanced bikes and helmets for OCAP Head Start programs in three surrounding counties. I would love to share some statistics with you to show how much of an impact these two have made. In the last year, the foundation held the inaugural bike ride, which brought in 189 participants, both to Troy University and virtually. We were able to raise $6,000 in total, with $4,000 being given to establish the endowed scholarship and donate 100 balanced bikes and helmets to the OCAP program. When beginning my college career, a little shy of four years ago, I wanted to find my purpose, and Dr. Heather Lewis has certainly helped me achieve that. I love serving others and I love helping people. Maybe some would say too much. This is exactly why I chose my career path in hospitality, to serve others for the greater good. My hospitality career might not look like planning parties or big weddings, but it does look like planning a better future for people of all ages, and most importantly, a better future for the community. To both Onik and Heather Lewis, I want to thank you for letting me be a part of this wonderful foundation. 
I would have never thought my time at college would bring me friendships and mentors who are here for a lifetime such as you two. I think it brings so much joy to the foundation and the community to involve your students in a very meaningful close to home project. Thank you everyone for letting me speak on behalf of O's Cool Bike Foundation. I hope that everyone in this room continues to do amazing things and stay true to themselves. To close, I would like to ask Onik and Heather, along with their family, Dr. Hawkins and Mr. Fillmore to join me on stage for a small presentation in memory of Owen and the work they are doing. Thank you for your time and have a great rest of your day. Good morning. I am Faith Bird, and I have the distinct pleasure of serving Troy University as the alumni director. And as Dr. Hawkins pointed out, 27 years and I'm still loving it. Uh, in my role, I am very privileged to work with a highly effective and energetic alumni board. Um, these alumni directors place a significant emphasis on both creating new scholarships and uh, raising funds um, to increase our ongoing scholarships. The president of our alumni board is Rosemary Elbash. Rosemary is a native of Op, Alabama, and a 1976 graduate of Troy. She has served as the state director of the National Federation of Independent Businesses for Alabama since 2003, and she represents its members as the public policy advocate uh, before all branches of state and local government. She is an active participant in many organizations, including the Alabama Private Sector Chair for the Alabama Legislative Exchange Council. She is the current board member of the Baptist Hospital South, and she is president of the Alabama Council of Association Executives, treasurer of the Alabama Civil Justice Reform Committee, and a director for the Alabama Public Policy Foundation, and that's just scratching the surface of what Rosemary does. Rosemary will now bring remarks on behalf of the uh, Troy University Alumni Association. She is small in stature but fearless. Please join me in welcoming her to the podium. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me here today to show Troy's appreciation to those who have created and given to scholarships and to congratulate those who are receiving these gifts. These scholarships have been created to honor individuals or groups or to remember those that have passed away. The funding of the scholarships may have been a large contribution, but many scholarships have been funded with smaller donations, including the $2 that you can add to your annual alumni dues. To the givers, you have provided optimism, encouragement, and you've inspired not only the scholarship recipients, but their family and their friends with your generosity. To the recipients, your responsibility is to follow your passion, complete your classroom education, but never stop learning. Even if you fail, it will lead to something better. The difference between success and failure is belief and often the belief is instilled in us by someone who has encouraged you. As we think about encouragement, what if I were to tell everyone here today, you have a deposit of 86,400 in an account. You cannot save the 86,400 for another day. You can't carry it forward. You must use it. How would you use the 86,400? Well, each of us has that amount each and every day in seconds. When we think of your time, how we use it, I want to share with you some quotes and stories that I've collected over the years. First, find your passion. 
finding and doing what you're passionate about gives you power to handle other aspects of your life. Create your own definition of success and attitude is that key. Charles Swindle writes, attitude can make or break a home, business, or any organization. The remarkable thing is we have a choice every day regarding the attitude we embrace with the 86,400 seconds that are deposited in your daily account. Author Seth Godwin says, we need to stop shopping for lightning bolts. You don't win an Olympic medal with a few weeks of intensive training or a national football championship with only spring practice. Great companies don't spring up overnight. Some are started in a garage or a dorm room. Every great thing has been built in exactly the same way, bit by bit, step by step, little by little. There are no shortcuts. You must be willing to pay the price. Make your family and friends a priority. The rewards of family and friends last forever. Make your past into a better future. If you're like the majority of people, you've made mistakes along the way. Many times, the tough stuff can just make your future better. Wisdom. Experience should, pre should breed great wisdom. By making mistakes, you learn not how to do things. Whatever successful people know, they haven't always known it. They've had to learn and grow into it. Take advantage of their wisdom. Most successful people enjoy a chance to discuss and share what they know. These relationships create a chance for you to grow. It's not wrong to lack knowledge. It's wrong to be unwilling to learn. Morel Warchester, owner of Warchester Wreath Company in Maine, had a surplus of Christmas wreaths in 1995. He decided to donate the wreaths to Arlington National Cemetery because he didn't want the wreaths to be wasted. He and a dozen friends packed the 8,000 wreaths, traveled to Arlington, and laid wreaths one by one on those graves. Wreaths across America was formed from that one act of service. And today, thousands of volunteers deliver hundreds of thousands of wreaths to military uh, cemeteries around the world. He's an example of how a small business can make a big difference in ways far above the jobs they create and the customers they serve. Identify and service. You cannot fully understand some things in life unless you go through them personally. Your experience may be the very thing that allows you to connect with a person no one else can reach. Your future may be better because you help someone else's future get better. It's not big deeds, but small acts of kindness that count for greatness. Someone said to be humble to superiors is duty and to equals courtesy. When Ronald Reagan was governor of California, he sometimes slipped out of his office early telling his administrator, Michael Deaver, I have a few errands to run. Deaver became curious, so he leafed through the to read file on the governor's desk. On top was a wrinkled letter from a man stationed in Vietnam. The soldier had written to Governor Reagan telling him about his life in Vietnam and how much he missed his wife. That particular day was their wedding anniversary, and he wanted her to know how much he loved and missed her. Although he had already sent her a card, he asked Governor Reagan if he would call her to make sure she was okay and to see if she had received his card. The next day, Deaver discovered Governor Reagan had done much more than the, sur than the soldier requested. He delivered a dozen red roses to the soldier's wife. The security said Reagan approached the wife with, extremely, with an extremely humble attitude and offered the flowers on behalf of her husband stationed on the other side of the world. He spent an, over an hour with her drinking coffee and talking about her family. 
Get ready, because at some point in your life, you will face failure. You're human. When dealing with the fear of failure, accept it. The worst thing in life is not failure. The worst thing in life is never trying. At age 65, after running a restaurant for several years, the business owner was penniless. All he had was a social security check of $105 a month, a recipe for fried chicken, and a vision he refused to give up on. As a result, he built Kentucky Fried Chicken, became a multimillionaire, and was a devoted philanthropist. In 1907, the University of Bern turned down a PhD dissertation from a young physicist student. Yet that student went on to change the scientific world and our daily lives forever. Who was it? Albert Einstein. The great educator and scientist George Washington Carver said, 99% of failures come from people who have a habit of making excuses. Remember, opportunity is a visitor. Don't assume it'll be back tomorrow. Now is the time, move while the door opens. And we all need to adopt the 220 degree attitude. What's the 220 degree attitude? At 211 degrees, water is hot. At 212, it boils. When boiling water becomes, and then it becomes steam, and steam can power a locomotive. One extra degree makes all the difference in business and in life. It separates the good from the great. Remember, only you decide how you're going to spend your 86400 deposit today. Thank you. You can tell by those remarks that our Alumni Association is indeed in good hands. At this time, I'd like for the uh, alumni board of directors that are with us today and the chapter leaders that are here to join us at the podium for a presentation. Dr. Hawkins, if you and William would all uh, join us as well. Uh, these chapters excel in leadership and they set examples every day um, by how much they raised uh, scholarships for these deserving students. They gave this past year a total of $50,000 to their local chapters. And if you're a near a chapter and not involved in one, please see me later on today and I can get you hooked up with the chapter in your local area. Um, and also, as an example of their leadership, the Alumni Association Board of Directors, coupled with these chapter leaders, are presenting a check in the amount um, $57,328.88 because of what they've given this year. Please join me in a round of applause for this group of leaders. I want to personally emphasize and say thank you again to all of our alumni chapters and the dedicated alumni board members who provide their leadership to our Troy family. We appreciate your support. At this time, I'd like to recognize our generous donors, the reason that we're here today. Since we gathered for the Fred B. Davis Scholarship Brunch a couple of years ago, we have 25 new scholarships that have been created with the Troy University Foundation by alumni and friends. I'd like to highlight and recognize a few of them this morning. As I call your name, if you would just please stand so you can be recognized. And if the audience will please hold your applause until all the donors have been called, we would appreciate it. 
Representing the Mark and Wendy Riva Endowed Scholarship is Mark and Wendy Riva. Representing the Owen Wayne Lewis Memorial Current Scholarship and the Owen Wayne Lewis Endowed Scholarship is Onik and Heather Lewis. Judy, representing the Judy and Robert Carey Nursing Endowed Scholarship is Robert E. Carey. Representing the Glenda Fay Hood Armstrong Legacy Endowed Scholarship is Donald J. Armstrong. Representing the Jeff Taylor Memorial Endowed Scholarship for Theater, Lighting, and Sound is Thomas D. Smiley. And representing the Dr. Leslie S. Black Endowed Scholarship is Dr. Leslie Black. We also have with us this morning um, Paul and Tara Elliott, who are representing the Paul and Terry Elliott Endowed Scholarship. And as you remain standing, I'd like to now ask all of our scholarship donors who are here today to please rise so we can recognize and thank each of you. We pass along our sincerest thanks to all of you, and we want you to know that our student success would not be possible without you and your gracious generosity. Let's give them all a round of applause. At this time, I'd like to take a moment to recognize our recipients of scholarships by asking them to stand. <clears throat> These students work hard every day for a degree that will allow them to become leaders in our communities through the education that they're receiving here at Troy University. At this time, I'd like for the families and friends, those who support them not only today but every day, to please stand and be recognized at this time. We, we can't say thank you enough today, but thank you again for our generous donors. Congratulations to our deserving recipients. Together, you're helping us build a better tomorrow. There have been a lot of thanks given today at individual tables between recipients and donors. We'd like to give everyone a snapshot of the gratitude felt by all of our students who benefit from our donors' generosity with a short video presentation. My name is Miles Thomas. I am a senior in the music industry program. I am from Phoenix City, Alabama. I am receiving the Charles R. Calkins Scholarship. My name is Miley Taylor. I'm a senior here at Troy University. I'm a risk management and insurance major and I am from Goshen, Alabama. The scholarship that I'm currently receiving is the Lance Robert McClendon Scholarship. My name is Indranil Chopri. I'm an international student here at Troy. I'm from India and I'm a senior financial economics and accounting major. I'm on the Free Enterprise Scholarship, which is sponsored by Manuel at Johnson Center at the Sorrell College of Business. My name is Paula Fernandez. My major is Financial Economics. I'm a sophomore, and I live, I'm from Spain. My scholarship is a Tarashu Current Scholarship. The financial assistance offered more time for me to practice and work on my skills. As a music industry undergrad, I was able to focus on my classes rather than focusing on a job. This scholarship has helped me to not have to go into any sort of debt or take out any student loans uh, to pursue my degree. It certainly helped me a lot because I don't have to worry about my parents having to pay a, a crazy amount of money for me to go to school while also putting in an incentive in place for me to at least have a 3.0 GPA so I can keep on uh, being on this scholarship. 
I've been able to accomplish because of my scholarships to continue the way that I was doing in my studies. It motivated me to keep with my good grades and it really made my, happiness, my parents happy to see that their work is for something. Hello, I'm Kerry Palmer. I'm the Chief Academic Officer here at Troy University. And I wanted to take just a moment to thank each of you for your generosity in supporting our scholarships through the Troy University Foundation. Some 34 years ago, I was the recipient of three different scholarships based upon the generosity of people just like you. They made it possible for me to earn a bachelor's degree and go on into a career which brought me right back home to Troy. As helpful as those scholarships were back in 1990, today they're more needed than ever. As you know, the cost of, of college continues to skyrocket, continues to climb, and we have many students out there who would like to change their lives with a college degree, but they can't do it without some help. And that help comes from people like you. Thank you so much for giving, and thank you for all you do for Troy University. Thanks to you. Thanks to you. Thanks to you. Thanks to you. I can dedicate more time to my studies. I can use my ideas to make a positive impact on others. I am confident about my success in the classroom. Thanks to you. I'm a leader. I'm a leader. I'm a leader. I am a leader. Well, as we get ready to conclude this morning, it's been a wonderful event this morning. We appreciate you all participating. I want to make sure I thank the development and alumni staff, um, and especially for our student workers who helped put this event together this morning. I also want to again give a special thanks to Miles Thomas, a senior in our music industry program, for providing our music not only today, but in the video we just saw as well. I'd also like to thank Sodexo for a delicious brunch. Let's give all these folks a round of applause. <laughs> As we wrap up, if you all will be patient with me for one more second, um, I'm going to go off script and I may get in trouble for this later, but I'm, I'm going to take a moment and um, recognize what I was made aware of earlier this week. Uh, Meredith who all of you likely know, um, is getting ready to retire from Troy University after 17 years of wonderful service to our institution. I told Meredith when we talked earlier this week, I didn't know what Troy University was like without her a part of it. And so um, it, it will certainly be a big change for me and it'll be a big change for many of you as well who have developed great relationships. And I could not pass up this opportunity to make sure that I say thank you to her for all the work that she's done for us over the years, especially helping us put on events just like this. Uh, Meredith, we all know you did not get to enjoy brunch today, although you helped put it on because you were working the room. And so what I'd like to do is provide you with just a, a gift card for you and your family to be able to enjoy a meal together on your own time when you don't have to work the room and worry about where everybody's sitting. So if you will, just please join me up here so we can say thank you uh, for your service to Troy University. Meredith reassured me she's not going far. She's going to be here, and we're going to hopefully be able to still continue to have her helping out and doing other things around the university in the future. Uh, in closing, I want to say one more time that we appreciate each of you for being here with us and your dedication to Troy University. As we wrap up and we wish you a blessed afternoon, what we'd like to do at this time is ask all of our donors, if you will, join us up here for a large group photo as we conclude our ceremonies today. Thank you all for being here.